Welcome back to Tetra Cancer Promona Block. This video is about troubleshooting playback mode on the GEC transport. This is a transport which appears in a variety of compact multi track cassette recorders and from Tascam, Yamaha, and Fostex, including the Tascam Porter 1, Porter 2, Porter 5, the Fostex X15, uh, the Yamaha MT2X, among others. So your problems with playback mode are going to be of two broad types. One is where the magnetic heads and the pinch roller don't raise all the way up to meet the capstan here. With any problem, you want to check that you've got new rubber in there first. I've already done videos on replacing the various belts. I've also demonstrated how to remove this plate and how to remove the gears beneath. A group of plastic parts to the right of this brass slot pertains to raising and lowering the magnetic heads. These posts onto which the parts are mounted, it's quite susceptible for the grease in there to become gluey, so you need to clean that off, put on fresh lubricant, and that can allow the travel of the magnetic heads and the pinch rollers to work properly. So check that you've done that first. If the problem still persists, then the likelihood is that there's an issue with this black plastic part underneath these magnetic heads. That's called the head base. If I put this into play here and manually turn the flywheel, I hope you can see that all of that is being lifted by a white part here. That's part of the gear assembly that I was showing a second ago. But um, it's exerting pressure up against this protruding black spring. So what happens is the spring is this shape and the recess for this shorter arm, the plastic breaks. And when it does, there isn't enough push of this white part up against that spring to force this pinch roller to make contact with this capstan. So the solution to that, which isn't my innovation, it's been demonstrated very well by another YouTuber concentrating on Porter Studio Repair called Third Island, um, is to remove this and uh, you can reshape this such that you unwind that shorter arm and then the newly lengthened arm gets kind of shaped to go into the recess. Very briefly, here's this head base removed. You can see I've actually glued this one, but there's a break here usually where that is meant to go. And so what you'll find is this is poking out and this is broken off altogether or is snapped. So once you unwind that, you get both legs to go through this recess here. I won't demonstrate that here. Instead, what I'll do is put Third Island's video link into the description for this one. The other category of problem you might have with this is, although this pinch roller engages with caps done fine, this idler wheel, which is responsible for turning this take-up reel in playback mode, doesn't connect with the take-up reel properly or only does it intermittently. And what you'll find is that the tape is being drawn across the heads and in between the pinch roller and the cap stand fine, but it starts to billow and build up and possibly get tangled up with the pinch roller and chewed up because basically this isn't turning fast enough to wind up the tape. If you've got that problem, it's worth understanding a little bit about how that part of the mechanism is working. Both of these reels are contained in a base assembly, which is called the reel base assembly, according to a Porter One service manual that I've got. It's located about there. I will be doing a separate video on how to remove this. Essentially, the motor is turning via pulley this flywheel and then there's an additional belt here that goes into the recess in the flywheel there that goes around this wheel here this wheel turns and that causes that wheel to turn and depending on whether this is raised or lowered it will push against this arm here and that controls whether or not this idler wheel is in contact with that take up reel so the first thing to do obviously is to make sure that this belt is okay. The other thing to check is that this idler tire is in good condition. That's pretty easy to remove. You can just get a flat head screwdriver under there. A little white plastic pin comes out like that. And that will lift out. Now you can see that in this case I've got a circular cross section o-ring in there. So you know you buy a a sort of set like this and I found that 6 by 2.5 where are we yeah that size there just about works if you can get the right size where it's actually square in section um, then I would advise you to do that 
I'm in the UK and the only supplier I can find for it at the time of making this video is based in America. So it ends up costing like 20, 25 pounds for a little shitty bit of rubber like that. So I'm not that keen on doing that. But all you would do is do your old one, get even a flathead screwdriver would do it. But I'm using this kind of solder aid tool and you would uh, get in under there, pull that out, put on the new one, push that back in, push that pin back and replace this counter belt around you can see that there's a little groove for it on the take up reel so maybe that fixes your problem but i've had two machines so far and i've seen others in forums where that hasn't been enough and so the other step you can take and again this isn't my um, innovation it's um, someone else that's um, in a in a facebook group about fixing quarter studios that i'm part of they found that the problem was that this spring wasn't strongly pushing that idler wheel up against the take up reel and their solution to that was to unhook that and to cut two or three winds of the spring off and then use a pair of needle nose pliers to fashion a new hook out of the shortened spring and the shortened spring obviously creates more tension of this idler wheel pushing up against the take up reel and that fixes your problem now i've been able to test that once because i was having that issue with this x15 transport and um Doing that procedure seems to have mitigated that problem. When I do my forthcoming video about removing and disassembling this, and I will be performing that on screen for this Porto 5 transport that I've got the same issue. The gears have all been re-lubricated. I've replaced all the rubber parts, but that's still not engaging properly. So I suspect that when I shorten that, that will fix the problem. Obviously, in the course of this video, I've described a lot of procedures about dismantling this that I'm not demonstrating within this video itself, but check my channel. I should have a playlist about the GEC multi-track transport, and that will include all the videos that you need to do any disassembly or reassembly.